Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 37 of this NHL 22 Minnesota Wild franchise mode here in the state of hockey on my channel. If you guys have missed episodes up to this point, head up into the top corner. If you do enjoy this one, show your support down below by dropping a like, subscribing, and of course hitting notifications if you haven't to never miss when I upload. But let's get into this one. So last episode, we made it through the draft and the regular season and... Actually, no, the draft was the episode before. We made it through the regular season last episode. And really, we had a bit of a crazy uh, crazy season from a couple guys here, such as, obviously, Matt Vamichkov, who led the team with 69 goals, 57 assists, 126 points. We also got 112 points out of Jagger Foligno and 106 out of Marco Rossi. So the top line was rolling. We had some pretty decent performances, like Lapierre put up 99 points. Javi Boulin got 88, which is crazy for just a 23-year-old. He was not expected to really be that good that quickly, but playing where he is, you know, we did kind of expect that as well. So looking into the future, you know, a guy like Lucas Rousseau is probably going to fit quite nicely in on the right wing there on the second line. Um, we've got some great players, great prospects throughout this system, and we, you know, we might end up trading a couple away just for future draft picks and things like such, but we are still struggling with the goalie development a little bit here. I mean, obviously, yes, Jesper Wallstead, 294 wins in 550 or 451 games is phenomenal. He's playing amazing, but overall for a career, not the best we've ever seen. Jose Strudwick gets off to an okay start, 15 out of 26, but an 883 isn't really the best save percentage for a young goalie. We've seen much better in the past from other goalies, but, you know, we'll see what happens. The goalie development has been a rocky track throughout this entire franchise mode, and it's really just going to come down to a matter of who's going to really become our bona fide number one starter over the next couple of seasons we'll keep an eye on that storyline but really i don't know how it's gonna go it's been so up in the air this whole series that we're just gonna have to wait and see but today we get to the 2032 slash 33 playoffs i guess it's just 2033 but we're taking on what is gonna be the colorado avalanche for the second year in a row Last year, they were indeed able to eliminate us from the playoffs in seven games in the first round, and we were the favorite to win that series. So that one really stung, but today we are going to try and get revenge. So let's take a look. It's been a hot minute since we actually recorded a franchise mode video here, but let's go check out the Colorado Avalanche, um, and especially since I can't even remember who's on this team. So interesting looking top six uh not really the strongest but really we should be able to beat this team apart from the fact that they do have some pretty decent prospects and players here on the defensive end their defense is just as good as ours so if they can shut down our forwards who knows what's going to happen maybe reese cappy goes on a crazy playoff run but what kind of what what kind of game was he in here Six saves, seven shots against, one goal against. How does that make sense? What? He must have... How does he have a 15.86 goals against average? That's crazy. So, um, I don't even know what happened there. But anyways, let's get to this. Uh, round one against Colorado. I think our team's better, but we'll see what happens here. So, game one against Colorado. We win 3-1. to one. Goal and assist from Michkov is a good start to the series. All right, game two, again on home ice. We lose 7-1. to one. Don't ask me how that team just scored seven goals on us, but they did, and that was pretty pathetic. So if we're going to have a series like this, you know I'm going to be jumping in and playing, but I can't actually believe that we just lost that badly. So, yeah, um, that was interesting don't even ask me how we lost that bad because i couldn't tell you <laughs> um but yeah that was uh that was something there all right so we're gonna toss gage schwartz back in here he doesn't get chemistry who cares how's our ahl team doing they're up to nothing all right game number three against colorado we need a win here we're at the ball arena we need to at least split this if not win both and game number three we lose five to three this Colorado team has got our number 
beyond belief. I can't believe how many games these t- this Colorado team wins against us. But starting off, down 3 nothing in game four. Not a great start. 3-1 back there. And, oh, make it 3-3. All right, we head to overtime. We could potentially tie the series up. We've literally outshot them 52-29. to and all right uh halfway through the first overtime frame here we're still looking at a tie game lots of shots both ways mainly for colorado now they're getting lots of chances and we got to get something going here come on boys and all right 60 to 39 in shots still 3-3 heading into second ot here let's see what happens and there we go let's go we get the win trey weller out of everybody scores the goal on the 63rd shot of the game we tie it up 2-2 but really i do not like how this series has gone so far uh oduya an assist per game plus two goals he's looking good and heading into game five now let's see how we do first period down one nothing second period 2-2 game goals from rossi and carlson and as we head into the third we are getting drastically outshot by colorado but Danny Zilkin gets the game-breaking goal there. Make it 3-2 for Minnesota. 3-3, Isaac Ratcliffe ties it up. And this is anybody's game now. Colorado getting lots of shots here. So maybe we could catch up to them a bit. We're not really getting a lot of shots in this game. So, all right. Down to the final minute. And we head to OT. So, another overtime game here against Colorado. Again, they go on the power play. They don't convert, but they're drastically outshooting us. We're barely getting any shots compared to them. So this is almost an exact opposite game from the last game that we just simmed and watched. And, oh, come on, boys. We need something here. All right. So we head into OT2, exhausted yet again against Colorado. And Colorado is going to take this one, of course. Dunham gets the goal on the 52nd shot of the game for Colorado. And we are down three to two in this series not where we wanted to be at all i was really hoping we could you know bounce back have a better season against colorado but they've got our number and we are gonna have to claw and fight our way through this first round so game six first period we're down one nothing great start boys second period a one one game i'm jumping in i'm not giving colorado a chance here um because they've beaten us one too many times for my liking so we're just a significantly better team. Let's see if that shows here in the gameplay. Take a seat, LaRue. That's what you get for trying to play that way. All right. Oh, Magnus Oduya. Oh, what a chance. How did that one not go in? You're kidding me, right? Like, that wasn't a goal. That absolutely should have been a goal. All right, Trey Weller with a guy on him. How is there no penalty taken here? All right, Trey Weller walking in. Tries the shot. Can't quite do it. All right, Jermaine McGinn interfered with after the play. You love to see it. McGinn absolutely throwing body here. And throws another big hit. Felino down right in front. Danny Zilkin. Oh my god. How has Cappy kept that out? This is just insane, man. I don't have any other understanding of this. Like, how is this possible? All right, Jermaine McGinn looking for a play. Gonna find Dominguez, firing through traffic, good chance. Now Jagger Felino walks out in front, and we are headed to game seven. Let's go, Jagger Felino. That's exactly what this guy does. He just scores in the big moments. And it's one of the reasons why this team has cups now. But, you know, as a President's Trophy winner, we really should not have taken that long to beat Colorado in game six, so... Oh well, it is what it is. Felino scores with 6-10 left in OT number one. And we're headed to seven. So we hit three overtime games in a row here. Um, as far as the AHL goes, our AHL team makes it through round one, beating off, um, who did we knock out? Rockford, 3-0. All right, very, very easy win there for the Iowa Wild, but... As we head into game number seven here, looks like there's a bunch of series going to seven, but let's see what we can do. So first period up to nothing. That's how we like to start. Very good start boards. We get out shot 10, nine, but it doesn't matter. Second period, five, one game. This one's in the bag and it looks like the Sim is going to treat us nicely today. 
by the looks of it, it's a 5-1 game. So we'll see who will be taken on in the next round unless somehow Colorado claws their way back. But it seems quite unlikely at this point. This Colorado team was a very solid defensive team, but just didn't have that much firepower up front. So that's where we beat them pretty handily in this series. And we do take it in seven games there. Matt Bimichkov, two goals, 962 save percentage for uh, Wallstead. And that's a great series there. That was a tough series though as well. All right, so I would assume we're taking on the Winnipeg Jets in round two. Vegas and Edmonton should play each other, and yes, we will. We will play Winnipeg. So taking a look at the Jets roster here, Newtson, Cooley's in 84. Oh, my God. And Chandler Girard, of course, we knew about him. He's a fantastic player. Brendan Goligoski's a good player, too. Kilwanen, yeah, they've got... They have picked up some serious name players over the last couple of years, and they got a really, really nice first line. So we'll see what we can do. Newton was a third overall pick. Okay, so apart from that, Oscar Bjorkstrand, just 21, is still a good defenseman. He'll likely turn into something eventually, but oh, Malaki, or sorry, Malaki Oliver, very nice defender as well. And Lyunin. Timo Lyunin, one of our ex-goaltenders in net for the Jets. They're also missing Braden Jones, who's, you know, he's an okay winger. And that's the team we're going up against here next. So let's take on the Winnipeg Jets. Should be an interesting series. Obviously, we have home ice advantage. We won the President's Trophy. So Edmonton, Vegas, Colorado, or not Colorado, uh, Columbus, Carolina, and Tampa Bay, New York. So game number one here heading in uh sorry joshua lawrence is back we got to just toss him back into the lineup over emerton because he is 71 rated at just 20 years old i really do think lawrence could develop but we'll see what happens so here we go game number one against the winnipeg jets is a four to one loss not a good performance at all magnus oduya still leads the team in points which is a little surprising so into game two here, and we win 4-3 in OT. There we go, Michkov's kind of getting back into playoff form here, but really not exactly where we wanted to be. We're up 2-1 to one against Grand Rapid in the minors, but we're worried more about the NHL right now. So game number three here against Winnipeg is an 8-2 to two victory. <sighs> Good performance there from the boys, and eight goals is a lot. So as we head into game number four now, we look to take a 3-1 series lead, and we do not. We lose 3-0 to Winnipeg, so 2-2 apiece. The only team up 3-1 is the Rangers, but as we head into game number 5, we have to win game 5, obviously. And by the looks of it, yeah, we took out Grand Rapid in 5 there. So Andy Johnson, or Johnston, playing amazing. Is it jo It is Johnston. I thought it was Jostin for some reason. I was like, how did I miss that? So game number 5, pivotal game. And we win 6-2. to two. Beautiful. So as we head into game number 6 here, we could potentially eliminate Minnesota, or, uh, Winnipeg here from the playoffs. First period, 0-0. We will shoot them 13-8. Second period, 4-0 game. There you have it. That should essentially conclude this game, unless Winnipeg gets to scoring right off the bat, which they do not. Another power play Minnesota, or Winnipeg, sorry. And yeah, the Jets just cannot solve us right now. Oh, shorty for Erickson. That one's got to hurt for Winnipeg. And this series is over as well. Winnipeg does not put up quite as much of a fight as Colorado. Although we had to fight and claw our way past Colorado to get to Winnipeg before beating them. But 4-2 series win there. Not really as close a series as six games, but Wolstead's playing out of his mind right now as well. So... All right, we go through in six. Vegas goes through in six. We will meet the Golden Knights for the first time ever in the playoffs, maybe? That might actually be the case here. No, we've played Vegas once before, and it was on our first cup run, and we beat them in five. So this is just our second time. Obviously, Vegas has probably got a bit of a grudge going after we knocked them out early um, in their last the last time we met in the playoffs but yeah they've got a serious team here for sure if they were able to knock out the Edmonton Oilers that's pretty impressive so we've got some old players too but 
Who cares? If they're old and they can still play, that doesn't make a difference. So their defense and goaltending is absolutely questionable, though. So the fact that they just beat Edmonton is kind of sad, actually, because really Edmonton's defense is better. Their forwards are significantly better. And yeah, don't ask me how, but uh, but yeah, somehow the Oilers lost. Even with, is that John Gibson? Oh my god, that is John Gibson. With Gibson and Swayman and Ned. Again, don't ask me how, but somehow Edmonton's out. So, in the Eastern Conference, we are looking at Carolina and New York. That should be interesting. And let's advance here. So, NHL playoffs are through. We'll take on Vegas, see how we do. And I do just want to take a peek at Carolina and New York. Of course, we're down to the Final Four. So the Hurricanes, they've got Scarabelli, who's a great player. Same with Guy Bonnet, of course. We know how good he can be. And, all right, you know, pretty decent team here. They've got nobody that's, like, super crazy, but they've got good players for sure. Um, yeah, like, Guy Bonnet's probably their best player, and we know exactly what he's capable of. Sean Meech is a good goalie. Um, and apart from that... Nobody else really that we should be super worried about. I mean, I am a little worried about Guy Bonnet just based on how good he is, but we'll see if they can even beat the New York Rangers. So the Rangers have got, yeah, Lafreniere is an even better player, uh, so we'll see what he can do. Apart from that, hints to Kachuk, and even Heedle is looking really good. That's uh, That's an interesting team there for sure. And, oh, wow, okay, the defense is absolutely loaded here in New York. So, yeah, 35-year-old um, Adam Fox is still just absolutely crushing it. Rasmus Sandin is really good, too. And Vutalainen, oh, my God, talk about a very nice Rangers goaltending group here. So, they've developed their defensive side a lot better than Carolina, but we'll see what happens. So, as we take on the Golden Knights, again, their defense is very much questionable, and I think we should be able to just walk right through it, but who knows? So, taking on the Golden Knights here, of course the AHL playoffs will be pretty much on the same days, but Game 1, 4-3 OT win, that's what we like to see. Game 2, I probably should check the scouting just to see how we're doing here, but, you know, maybe we will go for Karpatsev, that could be an interesting play. All right, and after game two, we are up 2-0 as we win 9-3 in that second contest. We win 5-4 in the AHL. All right, so into game number... Oh my god, Magnus will do you 17 points in 15 games. But into game number three now, uh, we're up 2-0, just two wins away from a cup final, and we lose 5-3 in game three. Carolina up 2-1, and we won two OT games in a row in the AHL, so... Into game four, looking to take a 3-1 series lead. Do we? No, we do not. We lose 4-3 in OT yet again. Oh, man. Only three goals is not enough to win a hockey game. All right, so in a game five, this is a pivotal game here. But we are up 3-1 in the minors, 2-2 apiece in the AHL. And all right, let's see how we do. Game number five against Vegas. We lose three in a row. Are you kidding me? We cannot lose four in a row here. So, all right, let's uh, let's get at them here. So, first period of game six, we're down 3-2. 1-1 game. Rousseau, or Rousseau and Brisson get the goals for each team. Second period, 3-1 Vegas. You got to be kidding me. It's the power play goals, too. Our team's so much better. How on earth are we losing this bad? All right, let's go try to make up for it, but our goaltending is letting us down right now. All right, so in Vegas here for game six, we're down 3-1 in the third period. We have got to push hard here to get back in this game. So let's see what we can do. And this should be an interesting third period. All right, Felino right in front. Are you kidding me, Najelkovic, right? <sighs> okay, so yeah, somehow this Vegas team... 
has just taken it to us over the last three or four contests here. So, Oduya through traffic, firing. Pass in front. Oh my god, how is that not a... Ugh, you gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me. That was easily like a shorthanded goal chance right there. And instead, Brisson's gonna do that shit. Come on, man. Like, come on. Seriously? Got two minutes left and Brandon Brisson's walking down the ice like freaking Connor McDavid. I don't think so. I, I like it as don't get me wrong, as good as a prospect as Brandon Brisson is, he's never gonna be like I mean, a lot of players are never gonna be McDavid level. Cause it's just like it's pretty much impossible. Alright, Brisson, come here. Alright, let's go boys. You got no time left. Marco Rossi throwing an absolute cannon of a hit. He loved to see it. All right, Matt Bamichkov walking in. Oh, come on. All right, Felino right in front. Can't find it. Oduya looking for a pass over to Felino off the inside of the crossbar. You're kidding me, right? All right, Matt Bamichkov can't find it. Pass in front, there we go, 33 seconds left, Marco Rossi gets the game tying goal, oh my god we're alive, I don't know how we're alive, but we shouldn't be, and somehow that cross crease makes its way through, Magnus Oduya sets it up, oh we're still alive, <laughs> I don't know how we are, but, my goodness. 33 seconds left, 3-3 three, three game. Whew, let's just hold on here, boys. At least make it to OT. Oh, okay, or just give the puck away immediately. All right, Trocek knocked off the puck. Gaspard Lapierre absolutely butchers that pass. All right. Trey Weller getting held on every play. All right, walks in. Oh, my God, he did not just do that. Oh, Trey Weller, what a play with 10 seconds left, and we might have just closed this game out. Vegas falls asleep at the wheel with 33 seconds left in the game, and that might be it. That might be it. We might be going to game seven here right now. So, yeah, wow, my goodness. All right. The city of Las Vegas is absolutely stunned as Minnesota comes back for two late goals. That look like they may have just sealed the deal here. Shot from Butsayev. Oh, God. Great chance. And Wallstead makes the final save. We head to Game 7 back in Minnesota. And Vegas fans are now biting their nails. Just absolutely worried that their team just choked out this series. So, here we go. This is going to be a fun one. That was a crazy comeback. And we're in it here. So, we got Game 7. The AHL playoffs are over. We're in the Calder Cup Finals with Iowa against Bridgeport. Bridgeport? Yeah, Bridgeport Islanders. All right, so. Whew. All right. Um, you know what? Let's take a look at, well, first off, here's our Iowa lines. They're good. They're a good team. Don't get me wrong. Lots of solid players throughout. Piero's a bottles having a year. Um, and then in Bridgeport... I really have not been paying attention to this, and it's a B. What am I doing? All right, and the Bridgeport Islanders. Badar is an absolute unit of a player. Brandon Coe's in there, too. They got some decent prospects here, not going to lie. Like, that's actually a half-decent uh, system here, but not exactly the same quality. Um, we've definitely got better prospects, but they've got a good goalie, too, there in Cesar Lemieux, so... We'll see what happens. That could go either way. So we'll keep an eye on that final there, but we got to make it to the Stanley Cup final before anything else here. So other series goes to seven games too, and starting things off, 2-2 game. Robertson, Felino, Michkov, and Hedberg each get goals for their teams. We outshoot them over 2-1 in the first period. Second period, 3-2 Vegas lead. All right, so we jump into the third. Oh, man, I can't believe we're down again to this Vegas team. All right, Felino here. Gonna lose it. Perfect. And they're just gonna play keep away for the rest of this freaking period, man. 
Go. Goalie out now. All right. Michkov coming down the wing. That way, Michkov. You're kidding me, right? Rossi, great hold. Michkov right out in front. Papier scores. Ten seconds left. It's all about funneling the puck to the net. Don't ask me how we're tied, but we are. This is literally last minute goals. Oh my god. <laughs> Najelkovic stops like 10 out of 11 shots in the third period and gives it up with 10 seconds left. Oh, that's brutal. Vegas yet again chokes it out on what should have been a closed out series two games in a row now. And instead, we are looking at OT game seven here. And there you have it. We head to OT for like five games in a row now. Four games in a row at least. So Minnesota's buzzing here. The fans are happy that they get a game seven in the conference finals, especially a game seven overtime here. But this should be interesting. So here we go. Matt Vimichkov going to get bumped. Oh, pick it up. Come on. Like, Michkov should just burn this guy. And instead, he still stays with him. Rebound right there. Jagger Folino gets it. Let's go. It was the messiest overtime I've maybe ever played. But we somehow get through. We are headed to the conference or the Stanley Cup Finals after beating the Golden Knights in seven here. Oh, I just turned and threw that one. I was like, I need a rebound goal. I need a garbage goal because there's nothing else is getting by Najelkovic here. We get it done, finally, but uh, brutal series as far as just how long and strenuous and overtime filled that series was. So Matthew Boldy out to accept the Clarence Campbell, and he does not want to touch it. Alrighty, and there you have it. We are headed to the Stanley Cup Finals. All right, so we'll finish this one up, see if we're playing Carolina or New York. I would assume New York made it through, but it looks like, yes, they did. All right, I wasn't sure if what was going to happen there, but let's get to this. Obviously, the NHL playoffs are over, and, well, we're lined up for a perfect season. This has been a longer episode based on all the gameplay, but I think that we are going to save this one for the next episode. We'll do that in the draft. And the draft coming up, I'm not set on yet. It looks like there's going to be some good players, but uh, yeah, Karpatsev's going to be expensive if we have to trade for him. I would honestly rather just stick with guys like Lapierre and players that we know are guaranteed like bona fide stars already. But, you know, Karpatsev looks like a seriously good player as well. Magic hands, goal scoring, and skating. If those are his strengths, he's going to be phenomenal. But it's really going to come down to a matter of who wins him. And looking at the standings, I mean, of course, we've got crazy franchise players on our team already that we don't really need another one. But looking at the standings here, Seattle could really use a guy like Karpatsev 15, 60, and 7. Like, that is brutal. So... Who knows? We'll see what'll happen, but uh, I really like our team. They're all around the same age, all pretty much going into the primes of their careers right now, and that's what makes this team so special is that these 20 to 30-year-olds are all just ready to win pretty much, and even a guy like Rousseau, who we took eighth overall, is still just such a good player that he's, he's going to dominate in the future, so... Yeah, uh, the team's in a great spot. My god, Odui is having a year as well. 21 points in 20 games is just phenomenal. And I think he is actually leading all defensemen, or all players. I don't know, he isn't, he isn't. Rossi's got more, but that's crazy. Like, he's definitely leading all defensemen in the playoffs. There's no way anybody's got more points than that as a D-man. Oh no, Fox is tied up right there in less games. That's crazy, so... Yeah, there you have it. Lafreniere leading the playoffs. Rossi right in behind him. Scarabelli and Kucherov were crazy good too, but even Guy Bonnet. Yeah, 
yeah, there's some crazy good players in these playoffs, but that's where we're going to wrap this one up. If you guys enjoyed watching us reach the conference finals, and then, of course, the Stanley Cup finals, as well as the Calder Cup finals with these teams, then make sure to show your support down below by dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting notifications. If you can't wait for the next episode, make sure to comment that in the next, or down in the comment box, and I will see you guys in the next one. This is Etanios signing out, and until next time.